Hi guys, good morning. Can you all hear me? Guys, can you all hear me? Hi guys, can you all hear me? Yes, miss. Okay, and can you guys see the slides as well? Can you guys uh, see the slides as well? Yes, miss. Okay, all right. Okay, so guys, first of all, I'm so sorry uh, for keeping you um, like waiting for almost 30 minutes. I had some issues with my teams, so I have to like. Um, yeah, I have to like. Um, like open and uh, refresh my teams like 100 times to solve the issue. OK, so um, sorry for that, guys, and uh, thank you for being patient and uh, being in the meeting until I uh, joined. OK, so yeah, so today will be our last lecture. OK, so. Um, yeah, so we will be talking about uh, funding allocations today. OK, so that will be the uh, main topic that we will be talking today. OK, so once we finish that topic, we are done with the entire syllabus of this uh, resource management in health and social care module. So. Um, yeah, so you guys can uh, finish the assignment as well. OK, so let me move um, on to the um, lecture slides. OK, so these are the uh, two main topics that we will be discussing today. OK, guiding principles of financial planning and uh, factors affecting uh, funding allocation. OK, so these are the two main topics that um, we will be discussing today. OK, so first of all, um, before we move on to the this topic, so here in the second subtopic, in, in the second main topic, we are talking about funding allocation. OK, so uh, funding allocation is a part of financial planning. So let's talk. Let's discuss this topic first. Guiding principles of financial planning, and then we can move on to the second topic okay? because um, funding allocation is a part of financial planning. So it's better for us to have a have an idea about the financial planning first uh, before we start talking about the funding allocation. So yeah, so these are the guiding principles of um, financial planning. OK, so guiding principles means the main principles or the main guidelines that you need to follow when you plan your finances. OK, so uh, those are the principles that we are going to learn uh, learn now. The main principles of financial planning. OK, so. Um, yeah, so financial planning means planning your finances. OK, so um, yeah, so the first main principle of financial planning planning is that um, Financial planning has to be unique. OK, and it should be financial planning should be unique and suitable to each person. OK, so basically financial planning is not something that we can um, copy from someone else. OK, so we can't we cannot uh, simply take someone else's financial plan and copy it. OK, so. Um, because financial planning is unique to one unique to each person. OK, so I will tell you why uh, is it unique to it, each person? OK, so I just told you that we can't uh, copy a financial plan from um, someone, right? We can't simply uh, take one person's financial plan and copy it because it is unique to uh, 
each and every person. So why is it unique to each and every person? Or why is it unique to each and every company? Uh, because each person or each company um, has their own um, income methods and has their own expenditures, right? I mean, the income methods, uh, I mean, if, if you take, for example, if you take two companies as company A and company B, both these company A and B, they do not have the same income methods, right? And also they do not have the same types of um, same types of expenses, right? So the in income and the method, the income methods and the uh, expenses will be will be definitely different in both the companies. OK, so so that this is the reason why you can't copy a financial plan, because if you take people and if even uh, like I mean, if you take people or if you take companies, um, the financial goals, um, the methods of income, the expenses, okay, so these and the resources, okay, so these things are different from one person to another person, or else from one company to another, okay, so due to these differences, you can't copy another company's or another person's financial plan. You have to make your uh, own financial plan by yourself without copying from someone else. OK, so. Um, so your financial plan, your company's financial plan should be based on uh, your unique personal factors and the external factors around you. OK, so there are certain factors that um, affect financial planning. Okay, so these factors can be categorized into personal factors. OK, so personal factors means the factors that you have inside your personality. Personal factors means the factors that you have inside yourself. OK, so external factors are the factors in the outside environment. OK, so these factors can affect your financial planning. OK, so when you make a financial plan, uh, you need to consider these personal factors and your external factors, and you need to make the financial plan based on these factors. OK, so these factors are different from one person to another or else from one company to another company. OK, so that is why I said financial plan uh, should be unique because each company, each person has different personal factors and different external factors. OK, so this is why we can't copy a financial plan from someone else or from a company. OK, so you have to uh, make your own financial plan. It should be unique to yourself, to your company. OK, and um, that is the main principle of financial planning. OK, so in addition to that, um, a financial plan has to be simple as well. OK, so um, like. Your financial plan should be. Should be something that you can um, read and understand. Okay, so like it should be understandable. Okay, it shouldn't. Uh, it it should not look like another language. Okay, so it should be a uh, simple. Okay, so it should be simple and it should be um, understandable. Okay, and uh, in your financial plan, uh, your goals should be defined uh, properly. Your financial goals um, should be defined uh, properly as well. Okay, so the financial plan has to be simple and understandable. That is another main principle of financial planning. Okay, and the other thing is uh, we must always set realistic goals. Okay, so when you make a financial plan, uh, you should always set realistic goals. Okay, so your goals should be realistic. Your goals should be um, your goals should be goals that you can achieve. OK, so realistic goals means the goals that you can achieve. OK, so. Uh, so when you make a financial plan, uh, you also need to make sure that your financial goals are realistic uh, goals, because the thing is, if your goals are not realistic. Um, I mean, if your goals are not realistic, you obviously you definitely cannot uh, achieve them, right? I mean, you can you we can't achieve unrealistic goals. We can achieve only realistic goals, right? Unrealistic goals are not achievable. 
So if we set unrealistic goals, we will not be able to um, achieve them, right? So without achieving the financial goals, we will not be able to move ahead as a company, right? So, so setting goals um, is a main point. is is a main uh, point uh, or a main step in uh, financial planning, setting realistic financial goals. Okay, because the and the other thing is, if we set unrealistic goals, like unrealistic goals, do not motivate you as well, right? Realistic goals are realistic, so they always motivate you. You know that these goals are realistic. You know that you have the capability or the potential to achieve them. So the realistic goals always motivate you. But unlike real, I mean, unlike realistic goals, unrealistic goals is the opposite of that. Okay, so when you know your goals are unrealistic, you know that um, you know that you cannot achieve them. So you do not feel motivated. You feel very uh, disheartened and um, disencouraged. OK, so unrealistic goals make you feel disencouraged as well. OK, so when making a financial plan, uh, another main principle is to always set realistic goals. OK, so you should always, we must always set uh, realistic financial goals, financial goals that we can achieve that are realistic. Okay, so those are the kind of goals that motivate us and uh, guide us throughout the uh, throughout the uh, journey. Okay, so um, yeah, so the goals should be uh, realistic always. Okay, so these are the main principles of financial planning. Okay, and uh, the other thing is, okay, so here you can see another principle of financial planning. Okay, so um, when we make a financial plan, we must ensure an adequate mix of financial products. Okay, so uh, that means okay, so that means. Um, Whenever we plan for a goal, especially when we plan for a long term goal, uh, we must make use of a principle called diversification. OK, so. That means whenever like whenever uh, you plan for a goal, uh, especially for a long term goal. You should follow this principle called diversification. So what is diversification? OK, so diversification means. Investing. Like investing your money in um, different things. In uh, in um, in different areas, in different projects, OK, in different types of projects. OK, so um, yeah, so let me read the rest of the paragraph for you. This means that our money should be spread across more risky and less risky investment pro products. This is because more risky products have a chance of giving us good returns and less risky products may give us lower returns, but at least they give us the assurance that our money is safe. OK, so yeah, so let me uh, explain this from the beginning now. OK, so. Um, yeah, so we are talking about the main or the guiding principles of financial planning. Right, so we discussed that it should be unique and it should be suitable. It should be unique and suitable to each person. It should be simple. The financial plan should be simple and we must always uh, set realistic goals. OK, and this is the next main principle in financial uh, planning. OK, so. When you plan for a goal, or especially when you plan for long term goals, uh, you should follow a principle called diversification. OK, so diversification means. Diversity, right? So here diversity means you need to invest your money in different types of projects. OK, so for example. You need to invest your money. In more risky 
projects and in less risky projects as well. Okay, so you should not invest your money only in more risky projects or else you should not invest your money only in res less risky projects. Okay, so instead of investing your money only in more risky projects or so only in less risky projects, you need to invest your money in both these types of projects. You should invest in more risky as well as in less risky projects. You should uh, invest in both these types of projects. OK, so what is the advantage? Wh why am I saying so? Like what is the advantage of investing uh, in both more risky and uh, less risky projects? OK, because more risky projects have a chance of giving us good returns. OK, so because more more risky projects always give us good returns. Okay, so more risky project for example, uh, starting up your own business. That is a risky project, like a more risky project because um, like you never know whether you will succeed or not, right? You, you never know whether you, it will be a success or not. So I mean, if you work for a company, you don't have to worry about it. You are working under someone, right? But um, so working in a company is less risky because it is not your own thing and uh, the company is something which is already uh, stabilized. So uh, that is less working in a company is less risky. But uh, if you. As, as I mentioned just now, if you uh, take an example like starting up your own business, that is a more risky project because uh, you never know how um, it will go, right? You never know whether it will be a success or a um, or a failure. OK, so starting up a business is a, can be considered as a more risky project. OK, so what I was trying to tell you is that uh, you should invest your money both in more risky projects and less risky projects. OK, so it can occur more risky project take a cut of it but less less risky projects or to it rock but kill him at the king a cut a limit when that uh, without uh, without limiting it, you have to um, invest both in more risky and less risky projects. Okay, so there is a reason for that. Okay, because the reason is more risky projects uh, give you good returns. Okay, so the in more risky projects, when the project in more risky projects, even if the project is more risky, it always gives you good returns. The returns are always good. OK, so that is that that is the plus side of more risky projects and in less risky projects, less risky projects do not give us lots of returns. OK, so low risky, less risky projects always give us lower returns. OK, so him more risky projects will return on the returns, less risky projects will up it a in a hair, less risky projects. Uh, mostly give us lower returns, um, but your money is safe. OK, because a less because less risky projects are less risky. The risk is less, so your money is safe. OK, so with even though the returns are low, your money is safe with less risky projects. More risky projects, your money is not safe, but you get good returns. OK, so as you can see, there are advantages in both more risky projects and less risky projects. OK, so more risky project a narakai less risky project a tamai honda kele heme kak ne. OK, so as you can see here, there are advantages in both types of projects. So they both are important. So um, so diversification means that diversification means investing your money in uh, more risky projects and less risky projects both. OK, so when you invest uh, your money in both these types of projects, uh, there is a possibility that you will be able to get. Um, get. Um, like get returns, get good returns from um, both these types of projects because your more risky projects will give you good returns and uh, your less risky projects will give you lower returns, but it will give you some kind of an assurance because your money is safe. OK, so you will be able to entertain uh, all these different types of advantages um, if you 
invest your money in both more risky and less risky projects. Okay, so these are the uh, guiding principles or the main principles of financial planning. Okay, so your financial planning should be unique and suitable to each person and to each company. And the financial plan has to be simple and uh, you should always set realistic achievable goals. And uh, when investing money, you should follow diversification, okay, which means you should uh, invest both in more risky projects and less risky projects. Okay, so you will be able to get advantages from both projects. Which is good for you. OK, so these are the main principles of uh, financial planning. OK, so now we are going to talk about start talking about our next topic, which is uh, factors affecting funding allocation. OK, so um, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, in our previous in one of our previous lectures, we discussed about sources of funds. Right, so um, share capital, if you guys can remember. So can someone tell me the sources of funds as you guys remember? Right. Like one or two or three sources of funds that you guys remember from that lecture? You got uh, you guys can check the lecture note as well if you want. Retain profit man. Yes. Retain, um, retain profit. Okay, that was a really good answer. And uh, what else? The sales of assist. Yes, sale of assist. Can you tell some like one more? Mm, depreciations. Yes, depreciation. OK, so uh, so well done, guys. I'm happy to see that you remember um, those uh, points, those information from that lecture. OK, so um, yeah, so all those answers are correct. OK, so depreciation, sale of assets, uh, reta uh, retained profit and um, loan capital, share capital, bank overdrafts. OK, so. Um, yeah, and uh, grants given by the government and uh, uh, charity uh, organizations, okay, uh, philanthropic organizations. Okay, so those are some um, some sources of funds that we learned in our previous lecture. Okay, so so basically, sources of funds. Uh, sources of funds means the sources through which you get money, right? The sources through which you get your funds, the sources through which you get money. Okay, so once you got your money through these sources, may sources after getting your money through these sources, you are allocating uh, this money for different purposes of the company, right? Taken up it is so up a bank overdraft when the pulang loan capital when the pulang share capital when the pulang sale of assets when the pulang. Okay, so me own me with the king. Like, however, once you obtain your money through this, once you get, once you got your money through these uh, sources, the next step is sali labuna ta passe ilangata karana second step ekak thamai you allocate this money for different purposes of the company as uh, once you got your money uh, you allocate this money uh, for different purposes of the company ke company ke thiyena ekak purposes walta oya me labuna sali allocate karana 
For this purpose, we will spend this much. For this purpose, we allocate this much. For this purpose, we allocate uh, 5 lakhs. For this purpose, we allocate 7 lakhs. We, for this purpose, we allocate 1 lakh. Likewise, you allocate your money. Once you got your money through your sources, the second step is you allocate your money uh, for different purposes of the company. Okay? So there are certain factors that can affect this allocation. Okay, so when you are allocating your money for different purposes, there can be certain factors that affect this allocation process. Okay, can you agree with Sally? When current process secretor affect current factors keep up there. Okay, so there are some factors that affect the uh, funding allocation process. Okay, so now you are going to learn about such factors. OK, so these factors can be categorized mainly into two groups as personal factors and external factors. OK, so there are two main groups of factors that affect funding allocation. One, personal factors, two, external factors. OK, so we will learn about personal factors and external factors in the uh, next few slides. Uh, but guys, before that, there is a small case study. Okay, so I want you all to read this case study. Okay, so because we are going to learn personal factors and external factors from this case study. Okay, so, so before I move on to those slides, I need you all to read this case study. Okay, so this case study is quite lengthy. Uh, so I could not uh, get it into one slide. So you can see the case study in slide number six, seven and eight. Okay, so as you can see, it is a bit lengthy, so I can't take it to one slide. Instead, I had to split it to three slides. Okay, so case studies there are in slides six, seven, and eight. Okay, so um, so what you guys can do is um, like since I shared this lecture note to the WhatsApp group, right? So go, so download it from the WhatsApp group, and uh, you can read the case study from the phone. OK, so I will give you um, I will give you enough time to read it and then uh, we can discuss personal factors and external factors from this uh, case study. So uh, case study a mamogolo method the mummy oglanta mummy she are clear in the screen they can keep on the back because this is just one slide. Thing. So the case study is there in slide seven and eight as well. OK, so the case, the same case study, but it's in uh, three slides OK, in slide six, seven and eight. OK, so um, what you can do is. Since I shared the uh, lecture note to the WhatsApp group, uh, just download it from the WhatsApp group and uh, read slide number six, seven and eight, the case study. Okay, So uh, read uh, every sentence carefully. Okay, slide number six, seven and eight. So for that, I will give you. Um, maybe uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so it's 10 now. Uh, we can start discussion at 10, 10. Okay, so I'll give you um, time now. You just have to read slide number six, seven and eight from the lecture note. Okay, and you have uh, 10 minutes. Um, until 10 10. OK, so by 10 10 we will start the discussion.
OK, guys, so I think now uh, we can start um, the discussion. Okay, I think uh, I think you got enough time to read the case study. So can you guys tell me what did uh, you guys understand by the uh, case study? Like, can you like summarize me the case study? Like what? happened in this case study? What is the story? Hello. Yes, Rivka. Yes, uh, the case study is about Karim who has uh, started his own uh, business. Mm -hmm. Um, of a cyber cafe and uh, Vignesh, who is an employee of a, another company. So they talk about uh, the their business, the advantages and disadvantages they meet, uh, like when they are like um, do, having their own careers. Yes. And um, they, are, they are at now Karim. Uh, now, when uh, Vignesh says that uh, Karim is very lucky to have his own business set up, Karim um, brings to his notice that there are disadvantages such as they have to work hard. There is a uh, like a high risk when it comes to uh, high risk when it comes to uh, you know getting the profits and uh, to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, do all the payments and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas Vignesh, he, uh, his, uh, uh, what do you call uh, the, um, uh, for Vignesh, uh, he doesn't have that much of a risk factor because uh, he is just an employee and uh, he gets all the benefit, uh, you know, a fixed salary. And uh, his uh, risk is lesser compared to uh, Karim's business. Yes. All right. So uh, thank you, Rifka, for uh, summarizing the case study. And that was a brilliant summary. You uh, summarized almost every important point. OK, so let me clap for you. Yes. <laughs> yes, so. Um, yeah, that was a brilliant uh, summary, Rifka. You summarized all the important points, um, all the important points of the case study. So does anyone else have um, anything to add to Rifka's uh, summary? OK, so since it seems like uh, the others do not have anything to add to what Rivka mentioned, uh, we can uh, move on to the case study. And uh, discuss the factors affecting funding allocation. OK, so we are going to discuss this topic based on this case study. OK, so um, yeah, so I will um, I'm not going to uh, read each and every line of the case study because I already gave you time to uh, read it, uh, read it out, read the case study out. So I'm just going to um, like. Tell you the story which happens in the case study. Yeah, and I'm just going to add a, a few things uh, to Rifka's summary. Okay, so yeah, so there are two friends called uh, Karim and Vignesh. OK, so they um, the these two friends, Karim and Vignesh, uh, they they meet at Karim's cyber cafe. OK, so Karim out of these two friends, Karim has his own cyber cafe. He runs a cyber cafe. So Karim and Vignesh, they both meet at Karim, uh, Karim's cyber cafe. They both meet at the cyber cafe. OK, so. Um, so Vignesh, uh, when they met at the cyber cafe, Vignesh was very impressed uh, with the business that Karim was running. He was very impressed with the. Uh, he was very impressed with Karim's cyber cafe. OK, so there were a total of 12 computers and there was a broadband Internet connection and there were really nice interiors. OK, so. Um, 
the cyber cafe looks really nice. So Vignesh was very impressed with the way that Karim um, had set up his business. Okay, so um, so Karim says you can't imagine what a success this was from day one. Okay, so Karim tells to uh, Karim tells to Vignesh that his business, his uh, cyber cafe, has been a success from day one, from the day that he started off the business. Okay, so people from uh, all over the village. So guys, this cyber cafe is in a village. Okay, so this cyber cafe is in a village. It's located in side a village so people from all over the village uh, come to this cyber cafe to send emails uh, to talk to their friends okay and uh, especially teenagers uh, spend so much time on facebook uh, teenagers come to the come to this cyber cafe uh, to uh, use facebook and they spend so much so many hours in uh, facebook in uh, by using facebook okay so basically karim's business Karim's cyber cafe is running really well. Okay, so so Karim is telling all these details to uh, Vignesh. Okay, so then Vignesh says it was a brilliant idea of yours to come home to the village and open this cyber cafe. Okay, so Vignesh uh, tells to Karim that it was a brilliant idea um, to um, like Vignesh appreciates Karim's idea of um, opening up a cyber cafe. Okay, so he he tells to Karim that it was a brilliant idea of yours that you came to this village and opened up this uh, cyber cafe. Okay, so to this, so when Vignesh once Vignesh said this, Karim responded to Vignesh saying this: the idea may have been mine, but I couldn't done it without Nasreen's support, and my family were very supportive too. Yes, so Vignesh was appreciating Karim's thought of opening up the cyber cafe. So to this, Karim responded by saying the idea may have been mine. So Karim says that the idea of opening a cyber ca cafe was his idea. The idea was his, but he got a lot of support from his wife. Nasreen is uh, uh, Karim's wife. Okay, so. Um, he says, yes, the idea was mine, but I got a lot of support uh, from Nasreen and my family. OK, so he has even though the idea was his, he has received a lot of support from his family and his wife. And um, yeah, and Karim also tells to Vignesh that he took a loan, a bank loan to set up his business. OK, and uh, so Karim is basically using um his wife's Nasreen's salary to repay the loan. Okay, so to set up the business, to open up this business, Karim has taken a loan from a bank and uh, he is repaying this loan uh, by using his wife's Nasreen's um salary. Okay. And uh, sometimes he can use uh, the profits of the cyber cafe as well to repay the loan. Okay, so when they get a really good profit from the cyber cafe. Uh, they use that. They use some amount of that profit also to pay off the loan. OK, and uh, they can Karim says that they can complete the payment of the loan by Diwali. OK, and um, yeah. OK, so this is what Karim says. We could use Nasreen's complete salary and all the profits from the business to repay the loan only because we have Abu and Ammi's support. Because of Abu's hardware store, our household expenses are being met and Ammi takes care of Nazia when uh, Nasreen teaches at school or comes to the uh, cyber. OK, so yeah, so Karim says that. Uh, Karim says that they can use um, Nasreen's Karim's wife's uh, complete salary and uh, all the profits from the business to pay back the loan to repay the loan because uh, we have Abu and Ammi's support. Abu and Ammi means mom and dad. Okay, Abu means dad and Ammi means mom. Okay, so yeah, so uh, Karim has uh, support from uh, his mom and dad as well. Okay, so uh, 
like Karim is not getting any financial support from his mom and dad, but uh, his mom and dad uh, are the ones who take care of Nasia. So Nasia, Nasia can be Karim's uh, child. Or um, yeah, it should be Karim's child. Okay, so so basically the baby is being taken uh, care taken care by Karim's parents, Karim's uh, mom and dad. Okay, so they are Karim is using um, his wife's uh, salary and whatever the profits that he makes from the business to pay off the loan, while Karim's parents are taking care of their uh, while. Karim's parents are taking care of uh, Karim's child. Okay, so parents are not providing any financial support, but they uh, help Karim to take care of the take care of their child. Okay, so yeah, so they takes care of Nasia, which means the child. When uh, Nasreen teaches at school or comes to the cyber. So when Karim says all these details to Vignesh, Vignesh uh, says this. Vignesh says this. Okay, so after listening to everything Karim said, Vignesh says this. I wish I could start something that gives me so much flexibility and a chance to be with my family as often as you are. Okay, so Vignesh is someone who is working in a company under uh, under an employer. Okay, so Vignesh is someone who is working in a company. So as you guys know, working in a company is not flexible, right? Because like you have like eight to nine, maybe at about eight or nine uh, working hours um, uh, every day, not every day in the uh, weekdays and half day in the half days on Saturday. So that is the usual um, working hours now, like full day on weekdays and half day on Saturday. OK, so um, like you can't adjust your, I mean, like you have to work for those hours, right? You can't adjust your timings. OK, so working in a company is not flexible. At all. OK, so but. If you um, if you think about starting up a business or running a business, that is flexible because like uh, you can. Um, uh, you can uh, decide at what time are you going to open the shop. Okay, so likewise, you have the ability to take decisions since it is your business, right? So, so after listening, uh, so Karim has that flexibility because he is running his own business, but Viknesh doesn't have this flexibility because he is working in a company. Okay, so after listening uh, to everything that um, Karim said, Viknesh says that uh, I wish I could. Uh, start something that gives me so much flexibility and a chance to be with my family as often as you are. So Vignesh says that um, he would also like if he can uh, do a job that allows him to be flexible and that allows him to uh, spend time with his family. Okay, and um, yeah, so Karim responds to this by saying this. Okay, so Karim tells to Vignesh, hey Viggy, you are fine, you are doing fine. The upside of what you are doing is that your risk is minimized. Um, and sometimes I feel bad that my wife has to work so hard, although she always reassures me that she is enjoying her work. And uh, don't forget your company is giving you holidays and long term benefits that I can only dream of. Uh, though, God, though God willing, my business could give me my retirement fund. OK, so yeah. OK, so Karim says that. Hey Viggy, you are doing uh, you are doing fine. Uh, the upside, the uh, the good side of your job is like the good side of working in a company is that your risk is minimized. Okay, because uh, like I I mentioned this in the beginning of the lecture also, working in a company is less risky because a company is something which is already. Uh, stabilized in the society, uh, financially stabilized, and you are working under someone. Okay, so the risk is uh, minimized. Okay, so Karim says this to Vignesh, like what you are doing, your job is less risky. Okay, and uh, when it comes to Karim, uh, Karim says that he sometimes feel bad about um, the fact that uh, um, his wife has to work so hard because um, in the case study, 
somewhere somewhere here in the case study it's like somewhere here in the case study it's mentioned that karim is using uh, his wife's nasreen's salary to repay the loan right so so because of this nasreen is working very hard right so maybe she is doing overtime or, or like she is working really hard since uh, she is the one who is contributing to repay the loan okay so karim feels a bad about that as well like he feels bad that his wife has to work so hard okay and um, and karim also tells to vignesh that do not forget your company is giving you holidays and long term benefits okay so when you are working in a company company like any company provides you holidays you have you are entitled to leaves right seven annual leaves seven medical leaves likewise as uh, you are entitled to leaves when you are uh, working in a company okay so you have holidays and long term benefits when you are working in a company but you do not have holidays when you are running a business right okay so so karim mentions about that as well okay karim karim tells to vignesh that like your company is giving you holidays and long term benefits but i don't have any of those karim doesn't have any of those because he is running a business which doesn't have holidays uh, which does not have holidays okay so though god willing my business could give me my retirement fund okay so karim says that like uh, though god willing uh, his business could give him uh, his retirement fund because i mean uh, like uh, karim be karim believes that um, the uh, karim believes that his business will gi will give him uh, his retirement fund that means uh, once he uh, retired like once he uh, stopped doing uh, once he stopped doing this job uh, he will have enough money to live the rest of his life okay because it is a business you can like earn a lot of money from it and if you save money uh, uh, wisely and if you use money wisely and save uh, money properly same some amount of money uh, for your retirement plan okay so once you stopped once karim stopped uh, doing this job so i mean he can't run the cyber cafe forever right so at a certain point he will have to um, stop doing this job so once he stopped doing this job whatever the money that he saved from the uh, from the business he can use that money for the rest of his life so that is his retirement plan okay so karim believes that his business will give will give him his retirement fund okay so yeah so this is basically the case study and these are the things um, discussed between karim and vignesh okay so now we can uh, start discussing about the factors that affect funding allocation okay so uh, based on this case study okay so guys before i start this can i know do you guys have any uh, questions or any doubts uh, from the stuff that we discussed so far no ma'am okay all right and uh, how about the others no ma'am okay 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 so guys if you have any questions you can always unmute and ask okay and uh, you can put in the chat as well okay so yeah so now we are going to talk about uh, the factors that affect uh, funding allocation Okay, so um, so funding allocation means allocating your money, allocating your funds. Okay, so whatever the funds that you get from your sources, you allocate those money. You allo you allocate those funds uh, for different purposes of the company, right? So there are certain factors that affect this um, allocation process, right? So. we are going to learn about those factors okay so the factors that affect the allocation of funds the allocation of money okay so these factors we can categorize into two groups 
personal factors and external factors. OK, so uh, first of all, we are going to talk about uh, personal factors. OK, so um, you guys can hear me, right? Yes, ma'am. OK, all right. OK, so um, OK. Um, yeah, so there are several personal factors that affect funding allocation. OK, so these are the personal factors that affect funding allocation. Risk profile, age, number of dependents, level of income, education and knowledge. OK, so these are the personal factors that can affect funding allocation. OK, so uh, we can start discussing about um, each factor separately. OK, so first of all, we can discuss about the risk profile. OK, so. Um, so risk profile means. To which extent you risk profile means to which extent can you take risks? OK, so your risk taking ability your risk taking capability is called risk prof uh, risk profile okay so um, so some people are naturally more comfortable in taking risks like some people are really like naturally good they some people are really good uh, they are naturally good in taking risks whereas some people are not good in taking risks okay so so um the people who are not good in taking risks are called risk averse. Risk averse means not good in taking risks. OK, so risk averse means we do not like to take risks. OK, so um, so if you are. So. So uh, so. Like if you are someone who is. Very good in taking risks. You can allocate money. You can invest money in a risky project. But if you are a risk averse person, if you are someone, if you are someone who is hesitant, someone who doesn't like to take risks, then you should not avoid. You should not invest too much money uh, in risky projects. Okay, so you can invest money in risky projects, but not too much money. Okay, so you can. Um, like you can. Uh, invest just a considerable, just a small uh, or a considerable amount, but not too much. If you are risk averse, if you do not like to take risks. OK, so it depends on you. Right, so that is why we call it a personal factor because it depends on you. It depends on the person. OK, so if you are a naturally. Uh, a naturally um, if you are naturally good in uh, taking risks, if you are someone who loves to take risks, um, you can go ahead and invest your money. In risky projects, invest any amount of your money um, in risky projects if you love to take risks. Okay, but if you are the opposite of that, if you are risk averse, if you do not like to take risks, then you should not um, invest too much money into ris uh, risky projects. You can invest, but not too much. Okay, it's better to invest only a small amount or a considerable amount. That's it, not too much. Okay, so if you are a risk averse person, you should not. Um, uh, you should avoid too much investment in risky projects. OK, so if we look at the case study that we just discussed from childhood, Karim was always more ready to take a risk than Vignesh as a risk. Okay? And as a result, he could take on the risk of doing a business while Vignesh preferred working for a company. OK, so. Um, so when we look at the case study that we just discussed, there were two people right in the case study. 
Karim and Vignesh. Karim is the one who runs the business and Vignesh is the one who works in, in a company. Okay, so when you compare these two, when you compare these two people's risk profile, you can see that Karim was someone who is, Karim is someone who is uh, ready and hum, someone who is willing to take risks. Okay, so that is why he started uh, up his own business. Starting up a business is a risk, right? Because you never know it will whether it will be a success or a failure. Okay, so you are, you are not you are unsure about it, right? So it is always a risk. So when you compare these two people, Karim was more ready uh, to take risks. Karim was uh, someone who is uh, Karim is someone who is confident with risks. So uh, he started off a business, and uh, Vignesh is. Um, Vignesh is risk averse. Okay, so Vignesh uh, does not like to take risks. Okay, so Vignesh is uh, quite bad at taking risks. So he preferred working for a company. He started working in a company. Okay, so the person who can take risks started up a business, and the person who uh, cannot take risks uh, started working in a company. Okay, so that is what we can learn from the case study about risk profile and age. Okay, so age is another personal factor that affect funding allocation. Okay, so let's see how age affects funding allocation. Okay, so age is a very important factor when you choose investment projects or investment products. Okay, so investment products means investment projects. Okay, so age is very, very important when you choose investment projects. Okay, so when we so uh, when we are young, we can choose more risky projects because we have time on our uh, side. Okay, so that means so. Um, yeah, so I told you that age is really important when choosing investment projects. Okay, so for example, when we are young, we can choose more risky projects. Like when we are young, we can choose more risky projects because we have time on our side, right? Because, um, because um, let's say you let's say you are young and you uh, invest your money in a risky project, and let's say that project was a failure. But since you are young you still have time to correct that mistake right like since you are, since you are young you have time on your side okay so that is why i said age is an important factor when choosing investment projects okay so when you are young you can choose more risky uh, products more risky projects because you have more time on your side and uh, risky investments usually pay off uh, well in the long run as well okay so risky investment risky investments usually give you good returns risky investments usually even though they are risky they have good returns they pay off well in the long term okay so um, and also as i mentioned earlier if something goes wrong uh, and uh, if something goes wrong and um, if you lose some amount of your money when you are young you have time to rebuild it right so compared to an old person losing money and a young person losing money the old person has a very less amount of time to rebuild it but a young person has um, sufficient time to rebuild it okay so that is the importance of age okay so uh, when you are young even if something goes wrong or even if uh, you lost some amount of your money. Uh, you have time, you have enough time, you have sufficient time to rebuild it over time. You, ha you have enough time to rebuild it. Okay. And um, when we get older, we should invest in safe investments, even if they get low returns. Okay, so risky investments give you high returns, good returns. Safe investments, they are safe but they give you low returns. In terms of returns, 
they are quite low, but the investment is safe. OK, so that is the nature of safe investments. Your investment is safe, but you get low returns. OK, so when you get older, you should invest in these kind of safe investments. OK, because they are safe. If you because the thing is, if you when you are older, if you lose some amount of your money, since you are older, you do not have enough time to rebuild it, right? If you lose some amount of your money when you are older, you do not have enough time to rebuild it. You do not have enough time to recover the loss. OK, so because of that, when you are older, it is always good to invest in safe investments. OK, so they have low returns. That is true, but at least the investment is safe. OK, so your money is safe. OK, so you have to go for safe investments when you are older. OK, so this may have been the have been the reason why Karim did not expect his father. To invest his new invest in his new and risky idea of setting up a cyber cafe in the village. OK, so um, up in case study uh, You guys noticed in a certain point where Karim um, tells about his parents, right? So he says that um, Karim says that he is using his uh, wife's salary and the business profit to pay off the loan and uh, his parents are helping him to take care of the child. OK, so he is not taking any uh, financial help from his parents. Again, our parents lagging. Kissima financial support take a gun. Yeah, parents lagging and come support take a The parents take care of his child. OK, so that is the only support. So. Yeah, excuse me. Yes. Uh, it's true that Karim took a risk, but uh, even his wife loses a job or something goes wrong. Uh, they won't be able to pay the loan. Man. Yes, Tilani. Yes, that's true. So if uh, if his uh, because um, like his wife is the uh, one who. Pays like the like he's paying uh, the loan uh, by using wife's salary, right? So like you said, if she loses the job in case, if she loses the job, then Karim will be in uh, in a huge trouble. Like he will be able to use the profits of his uh, cyber cafe. Uh, but that that is a problem like um, like if the profits are not enough uh, to cover the loan i mean if his uh, wife loses the job and if the profits are enough to cover the loan then no problem but if the profits are not enough to cover the loan wife losing the job can be a huge trouble okay so that is so uh, that is uh, uh, Ms. Gangul, and also uh, just to add to this, uh, there is some kind of a small financial uh, support from uh, his father's hardware, no? Because the household expenses yes. are being met. Uh, yes. Using Abu's, uh, Abu's hardware store. And he only has to, uh, you know, concentrate about the financial of the his salary, his wife's salary, and the profit that which he makes it solely goes for the business and the household expenses are anyways being met from his father's hardware store yes rifka yes that was a really good job in uh, mentioning that point okay and thank you for uh, bringing that point in and um thank you tilani also for bringing that point um uh, for mentioning that point OK, so uh, yes, Rifka. So as Rifka said in the case study, towards the end of the case study, it has been mentioned that uh, like Karim is not getting any uh, financial support from um, his parents for his business, but for the household expenses, um, there is some sort of a support because um, the household expenses are uh, covered by uh, Karim's father's hardware. Okay, so uh, it was somewhere here, I guess. Yeah, okay. The household expenses are being met uh, by father's uh, hardware store. 
Okay, so Karim is not getting uh, any financial from uh, financial help from his parents to his business, but um, to the household expenses, there is some sort of a um, support. Not not to his business, uh, but to the household expenses. OK, so by here. Um, so by here in this slide, by this last point, what I mean, what I. What I wanted to mention, what I wanted to convey is that uh, Karim is not getting any financial help. Uh, from his father to his business. OK, so to his cyber cafe business. Uh, household, of course, household for household he gets, but household is not a. I mean, household is a different thing, right? So here, by the last from the last point, what I wanted to say is that he is not getting Karim is not getting any uh, financial help from his father or from his mother to his business to his cyber cafe business. Okay, so what can be the reason for that? Like why Karim? Um, why Karim uh, did not expect his uh, father or mother to invest in his uh, business? Okay, because um, this is the reason. Okay, the age is the reason. Okay, because uh, what Karim does is very risky, right? So what Karim is doing a business. Doing a business is risky, right? Because when you are doing a business, you can't uh, you. The outcomes are always unsure, right? Anything can happen like a success, failures, anything can happen. OK, so doing a business is risky and you just learned that. When you are older, you should invest your money in safe investments. You should not invest your money in risky investments because if you lose, if something goes wrong and if you lose some amount of your money, um, you do not have enough time to rebuild it when you are old. Okay, so when you are older, you should invest only in safe investments. Okay, so this is the reason why Karim did not expect his father to invest in his risky business. Okay, because his father is obviously old, so uh, it is not appropriate for old people to invest in risky uh, projects. Okay, so this is why Karim did not expect this expect this uh, from his father. That is why he did not expect any um, financial help from his father. For his business, for his cyber cafe. Okay, so and, also they, and also they want to cover uh, their family expenses, no man? Yes, Dilan, exactly. That's a really good point. Yes, OK, so uh, Yes, the parents are already uh, covering the household expenses as well. So if you put this thing also into their head, it will be a burden for them, right? So um, yeah, so it will be stressful for them since they are already covering the household expenses as well. OK, so you just learned two personal factors that affect the funding allocation, risk profile and age. OK, and the next personal factor that affect a funding allocation is the number of dependents. OK, so uh, so if you uh, look at the case study. Uh, if you compare the two characters in the case study, Vignesh and Karim, so Vignesh was the only uh, earning member of his family. He is the only person who is earning in his family, so he cannot take many risks with his income. OK, so Karim, if you take Karim, for example, uh, Karim is not the only person earning in the family. OK, so Karim, so Karim's wife is teaching, like Karim's wife is working and um, like his wife teaches at the school. So it, the wife must be a teacher. Right, Nasreen teaches at school, so the wife must be a teacher. OK, so um, so Karim is not the only person earning in the family. His wife is earning and his father is earning. OK, so. He doesn't have um, and it says his brother is earning as well. OK, so they are in Karim's family. There are so many people who are earning. 
Okay, so so since most of the family members are earning, uh, Karim can uh, take many risks because um, most of the people in the family are earning. So uh, it is safe to take risks in in that case. Okay, but when it comes to Vignesh, he Vignesh he is the only earning member of the family. So in such cases, it is always um, risky to take risks. So it is um, it's in such cases, it is not appropriate to take many risks with your income when you are the only person earning in the family. OK, so yeah, so the number of dependents. The number of dependents is another personal uh, factor that affect funding allocation. OK, so fun number of dependents. Dependents means the number of people depending on you. OK, so when it comes to Vignesh's family, he is the only earning member. The rest of the family members are depending on him. OK, so that is why he cannot take risks. When it comes to Karim, Karim has very uh, few dependents in his family, only few people, maybe his mother or sister, or maybe just few people. Only a few people are depending on Karim. Most of the family members are earning. His father is earning, his brother is earning, his wife is earning. Okay, so uh, most of the family members are earning. So Karim has very few dependents in his family. Okay, so since he has very few dependents, um, he can take risks with his income. Okay, so he can afford to take risks while investing as well. Okay, so number of dependents is another personal factor that affect funding allocation. Okay, so there are other personal factors. So we discussed about three personal factors: risk profile, age, and number of dependents. So apart from these personal factors, there are some other personal factors as well, such as the level of income, education, and knowledge. Okay, so the if for example, if your level of income is low, if you don't have a good income, it is uh, risky to invest your money in big projects, right? Because your income is less. If you have a very good income, then of course you can invest in risky projects. You can invest in big projects. OK, so level of income is another factor that affects uh, funds allocation. And education and knowledge is also a factor which um, affects funding allocation okay because when you have proper education and when you have proper knowledge uh, it is easier for you to decide in which projects should you um, should you invest um, your money in okay because uh, it, when you do not have proper education or when you do not have proper knowledge you will not know in which projects you should invest and in which projects you should not invest. OK, so when you have education and knowledge, it is easier for you to uh, like. It is it will it is easier when you have education and knowledge. It is easier for you to decide. Uh, you will know. Which projects are good to invest and which project projects are not good to invest. OK, so invest in a project store again to choose what are the projects that you need to invest. You need education and knowledge, so that is also a personal factor. OK, so now we can start talking about the external factors. OK, so guys, uh, do you all have any uh, questions uh, up to here? No, ma'am. OK. So then we can start discussing about external factors that affect funding allocation. OK, so the first external factor we are going to talk about is economic growth in the country. OK, so every country goes through economic cycles, right? So that means. Um, there are few years during which a country will grow at a good rate. OK, so there is a, a period during which a country grow a uh, growth at a good rate okay? and then in the following years the country will grow but it will have a slow rate the growth rate will be slow okay so um it's something like this okay so if i if i have to uh, 
show you show that by drawing a graph. OK, so like in. There are a few years during which. The country will have a. Good growth rate. OK, so something like this. Okay, and in the following years. And in the following years, the country is still growing, but the growth rate is slow. Something like this. Okay, so the graph will look like this. Okay, so when a country is growing, when the country is growing well, businesses do well. Okay, it is valid to any country, not only to our country. It is valid to any country. If a country is growing well, businesses uh, also do well. Okay, so the stock prices also uh, increase and um, the interest rates and the inflation uh, will also remain moderate, will remain low. Okay, so the opposite of this is when a country is in a down cycle. Okay, so when a country is uh, in a crisis, in a down cycle, the opposite happens. Okay, the interest rates will increase, the inflation will increase. OK, and the uh, stock prices uh, will get relatively low. OK, so these negative things will happen when the country is in a crisis, when the country is in a down cycle. OK, so economic growth uh, in the country is another factor uh, that affect funding allocation. So here we are talking about external factors. OK, so previously we discussed about personal factors. So now we are talking about external factors. External factors means the factors that are in the outside environment. OK, so it's economic growth in the country is an external factor. OK, and uh, political issues is another external factor. OK, because when a country is when a country is politically stable, the economy, the economy also prospers. Okay, when a country enjoys political stability, when the country is politically stable, the economy also prospers. The economy also um, increases. Okay, so um, yeah, so there are there can be certain political parties which um, pay attention to growth, and there can be several um, and there can be some other political parties that uh, pay attention to social issues. Okay, it depends on the political party. Okay, so some parties pay attention to economic growth and some parties uh, pay attention to social growth. Okay, so, uh, so if, so, uh, like if, uh, if the poli so if the political, it depends on the political party. Like if they, if the political, uh, if the political parties uh, pay attention to economic growth, then they will do something to prosper the economy and um, it is good for the economy and it is good for the businesses. OK, but uh, there can be some other political parties who pay attention to social issues. They do not pay much attention to economic growth. Instead of that, they pay attention to social issues. So they will not. Uh, uh, they will not. Uh, <coughs> give much attention to growth, economic growth, they will pay their attention to solving social issues. OK, so with those kind of political parties, uh, the economy will not prosper much. OK, so because they are not paying attention to the economic growth, they are uh, paying attention to social issues. So <clears throat> with those kind of political parties, uh, there will be no considerable economic growth in the country. OK, so it depends. It depends on the political uh, party. Depends on the fact um, whether they are giving importance to growth or to social issues. OK, so. <clears throat> so the main point here is when the country um, is politically stable, it is. Uh, good for the companies because when the country is political, when the country is politically stable, the economy prospers, so the economy increases, the economy gets good, so it is good for the businesses. OK, and uh, so political stability is another external factor and interest rates is another. Um, external factor. OK, so interest rates apply when you take loans. 
Okay, so when you take loans, there is an interest rate. Okay, so when you repay the loan, you have to repay the loan with the inter interest. Okay, so uh, yeah, so interest rates are uh, interest rates are impacted by inflation. Okay, so um, like um, inflation is not the only factor that affect interest rates. There are other factors that affect interest. Uh, there are other factors that affect interest rates too. Okay, so for example, um, we can just consider um, inflation uh, for now. Okay, so inflation is not the only factor that affect interest rates. There are other factors as well, but for now we can discuss only about inflation. Okay, so when the inflation is high, interest rates are increased. Right? Okay, so interest rates, when the inflation is high, interest rates are increased to bring the inflation down. Okay, so, uh, so there are two sides of like, I mean, there is good and bad in uh, high interest rates because the thing is, if you uh, like the high interest rates are good when you are saving money, right? Because like you will um, get a good amount as an interest for your saved money. But it is a, a disadvantage when it comes to taking loans. Because like now the interest rate is high, so the amount that you have to pay as the interest is high with the loan. Okay, so that's why there is good and bad in high interest rates. Okay, so high interest rates, there is a good side and a bad side. The good side is it is good for your saved money because you get a good interest, you get a you get a good monthly interest for your saved money. Right? But when you are taking money, when you for example, when you are taking loans high interest rates are a huge disadvantage because now you need to pay a huge amount when the interest rates are high. You have to pay a huge amount as the interest. When you when you repay your loan, the amount you have to pay as the interest is big now when the rates are high. OK, so that is a disadvantage. OK, so interest rates uh, are also an external factor. Uh, that affect funding allocation. Okay, and inflation. Okay, so uh, inflation is another external fa factor that affect your uh, funding allocations. Okay, so inflation means basically inflation means prices going up, the rise in prices. Prices going up is referred to as inflation. Okay, so when inflation and in so when inflation is high, the interest rates are also high. Okay, so when inflation and interest rates are high, businesses will usually show lower profits. Okay, so when inflation and interest rates are high, businesses will show businesses will usually show lower profits. Okay, and um, the vice versa as well. When the inflation and uh, when the inflation and interest rates are low, businesses will usually show higher profits. Inflation interest rates high, lower profits. Inflation interest rates low, higher profits. Okay, so inflation has, and apart from that, inflation has a huge impact on the way we plan for our future goals as well. Okay, so. It, especially long term goals. OK, so if, for example, if the inflation is high, okay, so what I mean is that inflation affects our long term future goals as well. Because uh, read the last point mentioned here. If inflation is high, we expect the cost of a goal in the distant future to be higher and we have to invest accordingly and vice versa. OK, so when we estimate costs, for our future goals, if the inflation is high, we need to expect, we need to um, estimate a higher cost for that goal, right? When the inflation is high, you know that in the next year, this price will even, this price will become even higher. 
in the uh, in 2025 the price will become even higher okay so i mean sri lanka is facing uh, an inflation right now right a uh, huge inflation the inflation is really high so when you are making uh, goals when you are making loan when you are making long term goals maybe for 2024 maybe for 2025 since you are already experiencing inflation you know that in 2024 there is a chance that the prices will go even high in 2025 the prices will go uh, even uh, up to this amount so likewise uh, when the inflation is already high you know that in future it will become even more higher the prices will uh, rise even more in the future right so when you are making future goals when you are making long term goals um, you need to expect the cost to be higher you need to expect the cost to be higher uh, in the future okay so that is why i said the inflation affects your long term uh, future goals as well Okay, so inflation is another external factor that affect funding allocation. Okay, and uh, global issues. Okay, so global issues is another external factor uh, that affect funding allocation. Okay, so uh, so in any country's economy is affected by many global issues. Okay, so for example, if the prices of oil rise internationally, uh, we face higher fuel prices too okay and um, and global issues um and global issues um affect a lot when it comes to investments okay because uh, i mean if we take our country for an example um there is money flows between sri lanka and other countries in the form of investments right i mean there are people uh, there are there are people who are living in other countries, but they invest in um, projects that are happening in Sri Lanka. They have invested uh, in something happening in Sri Lanka, but they are living abroad. Okay, so if those countries abroad are facing problems, okay, so they are investing from abroad, right? So if those abroad countries are facing problems. It will affect their investments in the Sri Lanka as well. Okay, so when the foreign investors are facing problems in their own countries, it will affect their investments in Sri Lanka as well. Okay, and the vice versa can happen as well. So when Sri Lankans invest in abroad countries, okay, so when you are facing issues in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan investors will find it difficult to invest in other countries. Okay, so those are global issues. Okay, so um, so these these issues can impact businesses. Okay, so positively or negatively. Okay, so global issues is another external factor that affect funding allocation. Okay, so uh, so apart from these factors, so we discussed about five external factors, right? Economic growth of the country, political issues, interest rates, inflation and uh, global issues. OK, so in addition to these um, external factors, there are some other external factors that affect funding allocation as well. OK, so there are some other external and um, personal factors that affect uh, funding allocation. OK, so here are the. Uh, here are the uh, here are those factors that affect the the other factors. So we discussed about pers we discussed about some personal factors and external factors today, right? So in addition to those personal factors and external factors, these three are the other factors that can affect uh, funding allocation. Okay, so these factors can be personal or these factors can be um, external. Okay, so uh, for example, like if you take resource availability, it can be personal uh, and um, it can be external as well. Okay, so and if you take priorities and com uh, competing priorities, this is more like a personal factor. 
Okay, and marketing influences external factors. It's an external factor. Okay, so these are some other factors, pers personal and external both, uh, that affect funding allocation. Okay, so the first, uh, the first fact I have mentioned here is resource availability. Okay, so uh, for example, if you need to, so how does this factor affect funding allocation? Because if you need to buy some resources to your company, for example, um, let's say you need to buy laptops or computers or any other equipment. Okay, so when uh, so when you need to buy these kind of resources, you need to allocate money. You need to allocate some amount of money to uh, spend for that to buy these uh, laptops, computers, equipment, or whatever. Okay, so to buy the resources. Um, you need money. Okay, so resource availability is another factor that affect funding allocation because when a certain resource is not available in your company, you need to spend money to buy it for the company. Right, so resource availability is one factor. Priorities or competing priorities. Okay, so priorities means um, your priorities. Okay, Competing priorities means when you have several priorities at the same time. Okay, so you can uh, competing priorities kila kya ne make tamay mevela ve godakma vadagat kila oyala te ekak tora ganne beh. You can't choose one priority. You have several priorities which are equally important at the same time. So you can't choose. So those kind of priorities are called competing priorities. Competing priorities means you have several priorities with equal importance at the same time. OK, so priorities or competing priorities um, can can be considered as another factor that affect funding allocation because uh, you allocate your funds according to your priorities. OK, and uh, market influences. OK, so uh, yeah, so we discussed about um, resource availability and uh, yeah we discussed about resource availability and priorities so the other factor that affect uh, funding allocation is market influences okay so market uh, influences Market influences means the factors that affect a company's ability to connect with its customers. OK, so market influences means the influences or the factors that affect a company's ability to connect with their customers or clients. OK, so it can be the company's uh, corporate structure or it can be the equipment that the company has or it can be the resources that the company has okay and uh, it can be economic uh, conditions political conditions okay so it can be whatever so whatever the factors that um, affect a company's ability to connect with their customers are called market influences okay so these are the these are the other factors that may affect funding allocation. OK, so guys, um, that's all for today's lecture. Uh, do you all have any questions or is everything clear? Clear, ma'am. Thank you very much for uh, e your easy learning uh, method then uh, we uh, always try to absorb uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, that knowledge thank you thank very much for no worries janaka thank you so much for that feedback as well i also uh, have to tell something man Yes, Tilani. Uh, when I actually started this, uh, I had a lot of doubts that I would be able to do it successfully. 
uh, but because of the great support I received from uh, the three lectures, it was not that difficult for me. Uh, most of the time, you used a simple English speaking pattern. It was really comfortable for me. And uh, you followed a flexible teaching pattern map and uh, listen kindly. It was very encouraged to complete uh, this diploma. Uh, and, and I think that Somerset Institute is very lucky to have talented lectures like you. Uh, not only Somerset College, but also we all are uh, lucky to have uh, you. Uh, thank you for everything and best wishes for a very successful long, long journey, ma'am. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Tilani. Thank you so much for those sweet words. Um, and guys, I um, I also need to say I um, I really really enjoyed doing lectures to you guys because like mainly because you guys are responsive like when i ask questions you guys respond and like i mean different people respond right not the same person most of the uh, students from your batch are responsive so i and i really really enjoyed doing lectures to you guys so thank you all of you guys for being an amazing batch okay and thank you so much uh, for uh, saying those nice things to me Okay, so those are really I'm so happy to hear those and um, like I'm so happy to um, have the opportunity to uh, do lectures to you guys. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for those uh, nice feedbacks that you just gave me. And uh, in the first day of lectures, I remember I told you to introduce yourselves briefly, right? What you are doing and what are your future plans, uh, stuff like that. And uh, I remember you guys told like me, like you all had different, different plans. Like some people had plans of going abroad, not some, most of the people had plans of going abroad and some people have other plans. Um, and yeah, some people, there are a few people who had other plans as well. Okay, so whatever the plans you have, I, um, I wish all of you all the very best and I wish you the best of luck in uh, whatever your plans. Okay, I uh, genuinely hope that you will be able to uh, fulfill whatever the future plans that you have for yourselves. Okay, we so we wish you all the very best, all of you with uh, all your future plans. And uh, thank you, Mitni, and thank you, uh, Pubudu, for your uh, for your really nice uh, comments as well. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, thank you, Ms. Thank you, ma'am. I also want to thank you uh, a lot because like, when I started the course, I was like first clueless. I was just uh, for the sake of doing a course, I started and then it was a very interesting course and all of the lecturers were very nice. Uh, and when it comes to you, when I had uh, doubts with regard to the assignments and when I wanted to clarify things, you were there, you gave from response and you are very uh, you know responsive and you very good uh, you were a very good lecturer and um, yeah every i think uh, all of us are going to uh, miss all the lecturers because you were there you gave us a lot of knowledge and we are really uh, happy to uh, be your students and thank you very much ma'am thank you so much for those nice words rifka um, it means a lot to me thank you so much for saying those really nice things and um, yeah, guys, I'm so happy to hear your comments. I'm so happy to um, like hear that you have gained your confidence and uh, like you have uh, found this diploma interesting and you guys saying that you got gained a lot of knowledge uh, about this, uh, about these subjects, about this health and social care sector. Okay, So I'm so happy to hear those things. I'm so happy to um, see that progress in um, all of you guys. So I wish you all the very best. Okay, so you are, you guys are an amazing uh, batch of students. I really enjoyed um, this um, like five, six months teaching to you guys. Okay, so thank you for being an amazing uh, group of students and I wish you all the very best for all your future plans. Okay, and um, yeah, and thank you for those really nice things that you uh, mentioned as well. Those, Matt, those mean to me, a lot. All right, guys, so um, 
I can't say see you next week because uh, yes, Janaka. Uh, Mama, and uh, I also uh, thank to your friendly uh, resp uh, responding, and uh, uh, we can always ask and explain. Uh, uh, you ex you try to explain easily uh, how uh, how to. Uh, uh, clear that any any other doubts and uh, uh, I like to thank again about that matter. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Janaka. Yes, guys, I can see lots of people raising their hands. Thank you so much for those nice words, Janaka and uh, Metni. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, I'm uh, still an A-level student. Actually, I learned a lot of things from you. Thank you very much because I'm the youngest in this course. So you always give me support and motivate me. And thanks for your uh, wonderful comments, ma'am, to me. I really appreciate it. So I have improved a lot. So... Actually, I want to thank you once again for doing a wonderful lecture. And also, uh, I'm a still a level student. So my levels are next year. So still I'm studying for levels also. So I want to migrate and uh, get a higher degree. So I joined this course. You always uh, like a teacher to me. Thanks very much, ma'am. That is very sweet, Mitni. Okay. I wish you all the <laughs> I wish you all the best for your A levels exam and I Thank wish you, you all no worries, Mitni. And I wish you all the best for your other future plans as well, migrating and all the other future plans. Okay, so, so thank you so much for those nice words. Um and Sachini. I can see your hand raised. Sachini, I can see your hand raised. So is that you have a question to ask or you have something to say? Or is that a mistake? OK, so. Um, OK, so um, yeah, so guys, uh, since you all don't have any questions from today's lecture, we can wrap up the lecture now. OK, so um, since this is the last lecture from next week onwards, we are not meeting for lectures, but you guys can always uh, call me uh, or WhatsApp me, like text me on WhatsApp or text me like send me normal texts or anything uh, if you have any issues in your assignment. Okay, because your assignment is due on 16th of November, right? So I'm sure you guys might be working on it uh, at the moment. Okay, so when you are doing your assignments, uh, if you have any questions, if you need any clarifications, not only assignments, even in the like, even in the subject matter, if you need anything to get clarified, it doesn't matter. It's true that we do not meet in the lectures, but that doesn't matter. You guys can contact me at any time. Okay, so you can. If you want to call, you can call. If you want to text, you can text. Uh, you can get your doubts clarified uh, anytime, even though we do not have any more lectures. That is completely fine. OK, so guys. Uh, yes, Tilani. Uh, we really miss you, ma'am. <laughs> Me too. I will miss all of you guys from next week onwards. Yeah. Uh, what to do, guys? So, uh, yeah, so I'll miss you guys too. Uh, I'll miss you very much because you guys were like, like I said earlier, you guys, like all of you are very responsive. Like you talk in the class, you participate actively in the class. So I will miss you a lot, but uh, I wish you all the best. Um, do your assignment well. 
wish you all the best for the next upcoming assignment as well. And uh, apart from the assignment, I wish you all the best in whatever you guys are doing in your life, your uh, current jobs or your few current studies or your future plans, whatever. I wish you all the very best uh, for everything that you um, do in life. OK, so um, yeah, guys, so we can end the session now. OK, so um, next week onwards, there are no lectures, but um, you guys can contact me uh, if you have uh, any questions. Okay, so I will always be there to help. Okay, ma'am. Bye bye. Bye bye, Janaka. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, ma'am. Thank you. Bye, no worries. Can't say, see you again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. No worries, Pabudu. Thank you so much for these uh, for those kind words. Yes, I can't see you. I can't say see you next week because no lectures in next <laughs> week, but you guys can contact me if you need, have any questions. Okay, I will be there to help. Thank you, madam. Thank you. No worries, Pubudu.